Hi everyone, my name is Brittany Scott and I am a singer, songwriter, and recording artist. And today I'm excited to talk to you about the journey to becoming an apostolic artist. Now I wanna start off by saying that everybody's journey is going to look a little different. And the things I'm sharing with you today are based on my own personal experiences. Um, and depending on how involved you are with the production or with um, you know, creating graphics or songwriting, it's going to look a little different for everybody. So keep that in mind as we go through the session today. But one of the first things that I think it's important to establish if you want to become an artist is to find out or ask yourself, what is my sound? What is my genre of music? What do I want to record? Um, how do I want to brand myself? You've probably heard that word branding <laughs> applied to a lot of other things, but as an artist, we are branding ourselves as well. And so you need to make sure that you know what you want your sound to be. You don't want to start recording and releasing stuff that is going to be all over the place or end up, um, you know, just being a little more confusing about like, well, who is this person as an artist? I feel like with probably most, if not all of my music that people listen to, um, they can recognize it for um, my particular sound and who I am as an artist. And for me personally, my genre is considered contemporary gospel. And it's kind of um, this marriage between uh, contemporary praise and worship and that gospel sound. So it's somewhere in the middle. And thankfully they've created a genre for that called contemporary gospel. Um, but that is who I am as an artist and my songs are going to fit into that um, category or into that genre. So it's important to decide, do I want to be a gospel artist? Do I want to do contemporary Christian music? Do I want to do contemporary praise and worship? Am I a Southern gospel artist? Um, what kind of music do I want to be known for? What is going to be associated with me? And how you make that decision is obviously starting off with the things that you love and that you're interested in. Um, usually it's stuff we, you know, enjoy listening to and enjoy singing. Um, but also it, it's songs and music that our voice actually is kind of made for. Um, I would not make a great Southern gospel singer. I am, I'm not a Southern gospel type of artist. My voice doesn't necessarily fit that genre. So that's not a genre that I want to pursue. And even probably going super heavy gospel um, is not the best for me because I land more in the middle where I can lean gospel when I need to, um, but I still have that a little bit more contemporary type of voice. So you need to decide to where are my strengths as a vocalist and um, how can I you know, use that knowledge to my advantage as an artist? What genre do I need to kind of land in? Um, I'm not a Lauren Daigle. I'm not a Tasha Cobbs either, um, but I, as an artist, have my own specific sound that works for me and it's identifiable um, and it's a part of, of my brand as an artist. Now in church, we'll sing, you know, all kinds of different songs. Um, we want to have a multicultural, multi-generational um, approach to our music. And so that allows me to do a lot of things in our church that I wouldn't necessarily do as an artist. So I can't really use that as my, you know, measuring stick, so to speak. I've got to make sure that I am um, finding out what specifically is going to be my brand and then stick to that. And it's easy sometimes to go, well, I want to do everything. I enjoy singing it all. And maybe I like this song and this genre and this one and a different one. Um, but as an artist, you've got to be picky. And um, down the road, once you've really established your brand as an artist, you might have a little bit more flexibility to play around with other songs um, for fun or whatever. But especially when you're starting out, you need to kind of stick to that brand and that sound that is going to be your unique sound. Um, you might be a songwriter, and if you are, then as you're writing original music, you need to make sure that if you're writing it for yourself to record, that you're intentional about the sound of the song, the genre it fits in, and the content as well. And um, as you're writing music, you've got to make sure to have clear direction um, for your project. So if you're if you're going to be recording, you know, a four or five song EP or a full length album. You want to make sure that you have that clear direction up front of this is what I'm writing. This is the sound it's got to fall in. 
this is the type of content that I want to write. Um, and then if you're not a writer, the great thing is, is there are a lot of writers out there that that's what they do. They're not an artist. They're a writer and they would love for you to record their music. And so you can find their songs by either connecting with the actual writers that are doing this um, or as you work with your producer, they're able to find songs that are going to fit that sound. So as you're looking for songs to record, um, if it's an unreleased song that you would be the original artist on, again, you've got to be uh, intentional about your sound, about the content, have that clear direction. It's got, you know, as I'm listening to stuff, I'm going to hear a lot of music that I like and even possibly that I love, but the deciding factor on if it ends up on a project or if it's something I end up recording or not is, does it fit my brand? Does it fit my sound? Um, is the content something that is going to be on brand for me as an apostolic artist? Um, so you want to have that clear direction from the start, that's what you base your decisions on, um, is that clear direction. And um, thankfully, like I said, if you are not a writer um, and you, you'll have opportunities to connect with people who are um, or connect with songs from writers that um, could find a place you know, on your project. And recording covers is not a bad thing either. So there might be songs that you love. And I know other artists that have been successful early on starting off recording covers. Um, so recording covers isn't a bad thing, but again, it goes back to don't record a cover just because it's a song you like. It's gotta be something because it fits your brand and um, it's it's unique to you and to your sound, even if it's a cover that somebody else has already recorded and released or of a song that they've already recorded and released. So if you're looking for unreleased songs, I recommend working with your producer or connecting with songwriters. And um, obviously for recording covers, your producer will also help make sure that you are paying all of the correct you know, royalties and getting the correct licensing and stuff to make that happen. Um, and having a producer is a very important part of becoming an artist. Um, so I wanna talk about that for just a moment. Uh, about working with a producer. So I am not the producer for my own music. And again, everybody's journey looks a little different. So there are going to be some of you that are producers for your own music because that's what you love to do. You enjoy that part of the process. You're good at it, hopefully. <laughs> um, for me, I am one of those types of artists and writers that needs to work with a producer because I know where my strengths and weaknesses are. And that is an area of weakness for me. And I trust the pros to do their job and to do it well. So the first thing that you can do if you are wanting to work with a producer is to get recommendations from somebody. Um, sometimes it's hard to know where to start because there are a lot of you know opportunities or options of people that you can choose from. And if you start Googling, you're like, wow, there's a lot of, who do I choose? You know, is it just based on price? Is it just based on, um, you know, the type of music that they are willing to produce or not produce? Like, does it need to be someone who's local to me? Um, can it be someone who lives across the United States or whatever? Get recommendations from people. That way you can kind of narrow <laughs> your options down to something that feels a little more manageable. We do have several um, awesome apostolic producers right now that you can um, probably get recommendations for these people by apostolic artists who have worked with them. Um, you don't want to walk into a studio just to record. And a lot of people think um, that a producer is just someone who pushes the record button and, you know, the stop recording button when you're done. And there's not a whole lot of um, input that goes into it. But the truth is, if you work with the right producer, they're going to be very invested in you and in your project. And that's what you want. You want a producer who is bought in and they're going to make sure to give you their absolute best to make your project the best because their name is on it as well. They want to partner with you and you really have to look at a producer as though they are a partner with you in this endeavor. Um, so if you're talking to a producer, here's a few things you'd want to ask to make sure they're going to be a good fit for you. First, ask, do they understand your sound? Are they going to be a good fit for that sound and genre that you're recording in? ask, can you listen to samples? Um, a lot of them should be able to give you some samples of music they've already recorded with other artists that are going to be uh, maybe similar to the sound that you're wanting to record so that you can hear, you know, to see if it's something that you like, if you like their product or not. 
you need to ask for a quote. Of course, <laughs> we all want to know how much this is going to cost us. And honestly, when it comes to recording um, and working with a producer, it's a it's a it can be a pretty wide range. So get a quote to find out if this, is this going to be in my budget, something that I can do. Or if you're raising money, you'll know how much money you need to raise. Um, you need to figure out and talk to them about how many songs you're wanting to record and what the level of production is going to be, because that will impact the quote. If you're going for a more acoustic sound, the cost will probably be a little bit less because there's less um, instrumentation involved and um, you might not have you know, a full BGV uh, group working on your project. But if you're going contemporary gospel to full gospel, um, that might cost a little more because there's going to be a lot more involved. If you want live strings on your project, that's going to cost a little more because now you've got to hire a strings player. So Knowing kind of the direction you want to go with your song or your project is important. Let them know how many songs and this is the level of production I'm looking for. You should find out if your producer is a songwriter or has songwriters on staff that are able to um, 